Hey everybody, what's up? Today I've got some more gameplay of Drawn to Death that I want to show you and I'm going to do some commentating on it while I play the map. And uh, here we go, we spawn on the map and it's it's cool the way you spawn. It reminds me a lot of uh, Titanfall, you know, where you drop into the map and that's just uh, pretty cool. It doesn't really, you can't use it to kill anybody or so I believe. I haven't been able to kill anybody yet because everybody, it's a pretty quick game. I mean, as far as speed, it's, you know, it, it's something like Unreal Tournament speed. Maybe not as fast, but it's it's still pretty pretty quick. I mean, in this map, you have a bunch of these things right here where you can just, like, bounce around. It's kind of it's kind of neat. And some characters have abilities, a lot of them, to jump pretty high or go super fast. In my case, it's invisibility, so I'm a little slower, but I can, like, escape really easily. Drawn to Death here is one of those games that really surprised me because I didn't think I would like it as much as I really do. And part of that become is because of the uh, visual design. It's very simplistic from, from a technical aspect. And I know I said that before, but I'll say it again. It's it just... I mean, when I look at it, I almost don't even, like, see it. You know, I just see, like, the stellar art design, which I just... I still love. I mean, sure, would it look better with higher fidelity effects probably but the artwork just carries us so much the weapon I have now is a quad rocket launcher and the weapon that person has which looks like a giant floating arm is a special power-up that you can use every now and then in a match it's it's not really much of like a kill streak reward or anything it's just like something that seems to be on a timer for use and it allows you to use the creator's hand, uh, you know, the, the kid who drew everything in this game, essentially. And you can choose to do, like, machine gun fingers or, like, shoot rocket launchers. Or you can, like, use his pen to, like, aim it and then stab enemies for a one-shot kill. So that's pretty cool. The ability, the ability I just used there was one of my character's special abilities where I can throw my chainsaw at the enemy, right? And if it hits them, it does 90% of their health, which is awesome. But if it misses, then kind of you know, it leaves you open and you lose your chainsaw, so you can't use any more chainsaw abilities until you find it again. But yeah, each map has its own really unique and cool design. Like this map is, it, it kind of reminds me of the tutorial level and the way it's designed. And it's just really, you know, everything's bloody and, and all that. Uh, a lot of the maps share some kind of theme like that. And then you have other maps that aren't 100% finished yet because this game isn't you know, it's not fully released, so all the maps aren't quite yet there. But they're on its way, and there I go, missing another chainsaw. Ugh, I just, I did not have a lot of luck with aiming chainsaws this match. And if you look at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see this yellow, little yellow bar that recharges, right? And that's my, uh, basically, stamina bar. And my invisibility power works off of that same stamina bar. Luckily, I picked up something that recharged that bar for me. And I can be invisible again and hide. But that's how this character plays. Like, you have other characters like the vampire or cyborg guy who doesn't teleport or disappear or anything, but he flies around. Well, he does have a teleporting ability. But his ability is, like, you can press L1 and you'll flap your wings once, which basically allows you to fly. Uh, there's my favorite chainsaw ability. It has a huge range. It's really easy to use. Does 65% of the enemy health and stuns them for a little bit. I did make a pretty big mistake early on though, because when you play the tutorial, you're allowed to take away one character and two weapons for free. You automatically get the machine gun that I'm using right now for free, but you can choose two more weapons of your cho of your of your choice. The weapons that I chose were like really basic, like this the one I have now is like a, a burst burst fire long range rifle, and it's just so ho hum. I mean compared to like what this guy is shooting me with, which is like a dragon that shoots out fireballs that puts this huge damage over time on you, and I just can't compete with that. So I chose really bad starting weapons, but thankfully each map has its own selection of unique weapons. Not unique to that map per se, but it allows you to play with some of the uh, better guns in the game. If I did own more guns, though, during that screen that just passed, I could change which guns I wanted in my inventory, as well as the gun that I see on the battlefield that spawns. Because that's something you can do. Say you have three awesome guns. 
since you can only take two with you, you can swap out some of the guns that you see on the map itself for one of your choice. And that's kind of a really neat feature. It adds a little bit more uh, strategic depth in the long run of the entire map. Now, somebody to my right decided to attack me while I was attacking somebody else, so I decided to escape. And I don't know how, but he found me and killed me with his well-chosen shotgun. Because there is a fast-firing shotgun that I kind of wish I had picked instead of this, like, gun that shoots out saws, but it's also a shotgun. It's just not nearly as effective as the fast-firing one that that guy used. So, there's that, but... Most maps that I've experienced so far are well designed. There's a lot of like little pathways and a lot of interesting things about every map that's been at least finished so far. Now right now on the map, I'm second place. The f whole point of this... Oh, there we go. I oh, see, I attacked him, but he used the hand thing. Yeah, that's why it was uh, damage is reduced apparently when you're in the hand mode. But as you can see, I have one point. The leader has three points, and everybody else is two. Oh, no, that just changed. But whenever you die, you lose a point, and you can't go lower than zero. Whenever you kill somebody, you gain one point. So now we are tied for first. I was planning on chainsawing this guy, but I realized that I was on cooldown of everything. And uh, that time I just completely missed my throw. So this guy was kind of... That, that was the same relentless shotgun guy as before, but luckily... I was able to get out of there with my invisibility. And now it's my turn to use the hand. So, what I like to do is I like to back up. Oh, I somehow missed that one. But, I think I almost got one of them. Yeah, I didn't kill them. Though. Bastard got away. But I was able to finish off that guy, so good enough. Still tied for first place, 3-3. Three, three. It could really be anybody's game. Oh, except he just died, so it's 3-2. And that, that gun that I just passed, that's the gun that I picked and that I don't like. That gun especially turns out to be bad because there's this bug. I don't know how to get it to work, but what happens is you'll go to reload the shotgun to allow you to use the saws, right? Which are almost a one-shot kill. And it won't, like, it won't work. So uh, that's, uh, that, that gets annoying every now and then when that happens. So I just stick to the burst rifle and the, uh, basically assault rifle. And then any other gun that I can pick up on the map. I feel like this game has a really good chance of becoming something big, at least on the PlayStation 4. That's the only console I know of at the moment that's coming out on. But it's definitely unique, and it kind of fills... It fills a spot on the PS4 library that not many shooters can or have. It's very, very arcadey. Very over the top, very artistically designed. And I just don't know of any other game that can really do that, at least to this degree. There's also a lot of tactical depth in this game between the way you shoot people, sprinting, melee, grenades, uh, special abilities, special perks, each character's abilities and how they like work off of each other. Plus just how unique some of the guns are. There's definitely a lot of variety in playing map or match after match. Hasn't really gotten old yet for me, even though I've played at least 30, 40 matches so far. Now I'm finally in the lead. I've got four points. The guy below me has two, two, one, and then zero. So it's almost a shoe. And see, and I was aiming for that guy down there, but I accidentally hit the dude in the hand with all those rockets, which killed him somehow um, due to my lucky accuracy. Bam! I won. So that was that was a fun game, and I've got more gameplay like this. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see me doing videos like this every now and then, or more often, where I'm just like, you know, taking good matches and then commenting over them with, with whatever, really. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed playing it and commenting on it for you. It's a really fun game. It's called Drawn to Death. Upcoming free-to-play third-person over-the-top shooter. Exclusive to the PlayStation 4, or at least I'm told. But keep an eye out for it, because it might be coming around the corner. I don't know when, they haven't said any dates yet, but I know sooner or later they'd like to go public. And when they do, I think you might actually enjoy it. So, thank you again for watching. Hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you like videos like this and want to see more of it. And I will catch you next time.